I used up a lot of paper as a kid. I didn't normally have access to a computer, so I made a lot of games with craft materials. I used paper, cardboard, anything I could get my hands on. I have fond memories of making cardboard arcade machines, connects computers, and paper games, which we're going to talk about today. When I was around 8 or 9, I'd make these little paper games that you could play with your finger and a pencil. Going back through them, the one that stuck out to me the most was called Myth. I'd call it a mix between Zelda, Metroid, and Adventure on the Atari. I was cleaning up my room packing for college when I found this little container with all my old paper games in it, so I decided to be a fun excuse to not work on Castillo if I tried to remaster one of these games instead. I wanted to see how its original limitations of being stuck on a sheet of paper would translate to becoming an actual video game. I gave myself 15 days to work on it and I was able to make it in that time frame. The first step was to import my scan and start tracing it with ProBuilder. This wasn't as easy as I expected because I was apparently a pretty sloppy artist. I had to interpret where to put some of the walls that I drew at an angle, and I don't agree with a lot of the level design that I did, but I wanted to stay 100% accurate to the original, so I kept everything. Next I had to model the items. The step wasn't too bad, and I was able to get them all done pretty fast. After that I modeled the enemies and bosses. The final boss took some interpretation, and although this probably isn't how I imagined it, I think it's the most appropriate and it accommodates my current modeling skills. One of the issues that I ran into is that the game takes place from a bird's eye view, but the enemies are always facing the viewer. I had to remodel some things and balance the way that they're all angled to make sure that they're both facing the player and the camera, which took a little bit of time, but eventually I got it down. Then I started to draw some textures. I made a couple normal mouths, but I didn't do it for everything because I'm still not confident in my skills for that kind of stuff when it comes to things that aren't just shiny walls. I'm pretty disappointed in how the materials came out. I really wanted it to look like The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening on the Switch, but I think that that would have taken a lot more time and that I probably would have had to make my own shader, which would have taken a couple more days that I just didn't have for this project. Animating might have been the most tedious part of the process. I had to animate collection animations for every single item you pick up, which was really boring. It was just growing and shrinking the item or spinning it a little bit or things like that, and then activating a script. But I had a great time animating each of the bosses, and one of my favorites is this hand model because it took a long time to make it look pretty natural. I, it went through a ton of iterations, but I think it came up looking very nice. After that I worked on the audio. I basically just used things in my room and used enough audacity magic to try to make them sound as good as possible. One of the sound effects I'm happy with is when you destroy this boulder by freezing it. I got a couple glass bottles and I slammed them together and then I did it a couple more times and then I just put them all together on audacity and then blew on my microphone to make the main explosion sound effect. The next thing I did was work on the music, and uh, I've never made music before, so one of my friends recommended that I use the Google Music Tools, and I made this 8 second loop that I hate, I really hate it, but uh, I didn't have enough time to do FL Studio or something, so I just added a couple variants to make sure that people didn't go totally insane, and uh, hope for the best. You guys will see it on Spotify in a month, I promise. Next was scripting. It was pretty annoying making scripts for collecting all the items, but otherwise scripting was surprisingly lightweight this time. It's mostly just triggers leading to animation with a few normal scripts that are sprinkled in there like movement and weapons. We finally got to polishing. I redid a lot of the rooms to make them stand out from each other and added a few extra details to them later. I also spruced up lighting and post-processing, but I normally work on the lighting alongside other things, so there wasn't much to do there. After that, I created the main menu, desk screen, credit scene, and a settings menu. I know I sort of flew through those, but there's really not much to talk about. They're all pretty basic. After that, I was done working on the game, so I had to start the promotional stuff. So I made this poster for the game John Itch.io page, another promotion in Adobe Illustrator. It's pretty rough, but I think it's satisfactory since the game isn't too important for my portfolio, and also because it's going to be a pretty small icon. Finally, after a few more hours of boring playtesting, I made my final build for PC, Mac, and Linux and threw together a parody of the Ocarina of Time trailer and uploaded it. But then I tried the Mac version and realized it ran terribly, so very last minute I added a low graphic setting. But it isn't perfect, so hopefully I'll be able to go back and try to optimize it for Mac. Me from the future here, I optimized it for Mac, and you can also play it in your web browser now. The game looks a lot worse for this version, but it runs so much better. The last step was publishing and promotion, so I put up my trailer and then an hour later I uploaded the game to itch.io and game job, updated my portfolio, and made a post on my Twitter page. We already know the 8 year old me wasn't a master of level design, but I think it's important to go through and criticize some of the parts of the game that I no longer agree with. I definitely got lazy or didn't plan towards the second half because it becomes a lot more linear and boring. A lot of the items you get are single use and there's a lot of room for you only do one thing and then just leave. I also never explained what the items do in the original game, 
there's a little title screen that has all the pictures and the names of them, but I never actually describe what they do, so you kind of have to infer. I spent a day trying to figure out the ending progression of the game, because apparently the boomerang breaks boulders. I'm still not actually sure if that's what it does, but it's my best guess and that's how I implemented it. It doesn't include any explicit instructions, so if I handed it to a stranger, they probably wouldn't be able to figure out how to play it. This version does give you hints, but I still think it might confuse a couple people. Finally, most of the items are just keys and a trench coat, with the exception being the bucket. They're used for killing bosses and opening up locked areas. Yes, I think this was pretty lazy. Overall, I had a nice time working on this pretty short-term project. It was a nice break from a lot of the bigger ones that I was working on, and I got to take a look back at some of my older game design. I think it was really interesting going over this game, especially because I made it on paper, so I had to follow those limitations back then, and I was sort of able to free it from that and see if it would still stand up. Which, I mean, it didn't really stand up in the first place, but you know what? I might do this some other time with some of my other paper games. We'll see if you guys like it or not. And I hope everyone has a great day.